free box spring event is back at Sleep Outfitters. For a limited time, buy a Sealy mattress and get your choice of a free box spring or up to $300 off an adjustable base. Ask about free same-day delivery and 0% financing at Sleep Outfitters. Hello and welcome back to the Tennessean's Bernard Pollard Show presented by Sleep Outfitters. We are here live at Moe's Barbecue in School Springs and this has become, I think, one of my favorite segments, the audience Q&A. We always get some good questions and some good answers from you guys up there. So we're going to start with one from Twitter and uh, this one is actually from our new food columnist at the Tennessean. So I think you might know what's coming here, Cam. He, his, his Twitter handle is at Reed. Jim Myers, and he says, Cam, so you know your way around the kitchen, I hear. What's your go-to meal when friends drop by without warning? I would probably say I'm going to get on the grill and do a, a T-bone steak. I'd probably say that's my go-to. I'll mess some burgers up, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll probably do a T-bone. Hey, Bernard, in, in your house, what's, what's your guys' go-to meal? Nachos. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna put, we're gonna put some nachos on and some uh, tortilla chips. Uh, sometimes some you know people want Doritos, but uh, you know I'm a nacho guy. But I'm kind of surprised that Cam's answer. Who just carries steak, T-bone steaks in their freezer? So I do. Yeah. <laughs> no, Pretty no, impressive. I'm gonna run, run the Publix real quick. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. All right, we've got somebody now from our audience here live at Moe's. Go ahead and tell me your name. Judy Simon. Hi, Judy. What question do you have? Uh, it's for Bernard. Um, we've been talking about his cooking skills. Can you tell me about your invention? <laughs> can he tell you about his invention? Well, yes, I can tell you a little bit, I guess. Um, uh, Jess, I, I heard you needed you needed the tray while you were getting ready in the, in the bathroom. <laughs> so it travels uh, very well. Yes, I, exactly. I do it in my house as well. I have I have a pedestal sink, very small bathroom. I, I think I need two. Oh, hey, so uh, yes, definitely. It's a, it's a, uh, I invented a uh, portable tray. It's a heat resistant tray uh, for men and women um, for pedestal sinks or sinks with limited counter space. Uh, it actually gives you that extra, you know, space you need uh, to put your curling iron, whatever it is, your appliances, your makeup, whatever it is, guys with their clippers, uh, brushes, whatever, um, and uh, gives you that room and, and you can either keep you organized or you can, you know, just kind of keep your stuff on there and run your water at the same time. So it's pretty cool. Okay, so this is what I need to know. Where were you when the inspiration struck? Like, did you get hit in the head and you're like, oh my gosh, I have an idea. How did that work for you? I was, I was actually in Baltimore and I was, uh, I was about to get a massage. And uh, my massage therapist, she was just like, oh, I'm sorry I'm late. I just had all my stuff in the, in the sink and, and, you know, just all kind of mess. And she was like, I need something to help me. So, and it's something I thought about before, but, you know, coming up with this idea has actually been really cool. Uh, to see just the response from people and, you know, fans and just, you know, just different customers. It's just been really, really cool. Very cool. Very cool. I'm glad you were able to talk about that. Okay, we've got another one from Twitter now, guys. Uh, this one is from Kevin Patrick Duffy at underscore St. Pat. And he wants to know, even with the slow start, would you still say there is a better attitude in this year's locker room than last year's? Um, I would say it's definitely a better attitude, but I think the sense of urgency um, needs to uh, needs to be better. Uh, I think you know just with you know handling adversity that needs to be better as well. Um, you know, but just the players that we have, we have a we have a really good group of guys, a very very talented group of guys. But I you know sometimes when you with organizations like this where you've lost for so long and, and the fans are, are trying to beat on the door to, to get some out of you. You know, it shouldn't be the fans have to beat, you know, to get production out of you. It should be the players, you know, and I, 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 I live and I die by this. I've never seen a player give his check back, you know, so I want to see players go out and, 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 and put all that they have, you know, all that they have into these games and uh, it's, you know, it's, it, it, something has to turn. Yeah, absolutely. Cam, what, what do you think about that? No, I pretty much uh, I agree with what Bernard said. I think that we have a lot of competitors on this team. I think everybody's all in. Uh, when we look at film, there are things that we can correct. So I think, you know, we just basically feel like it's in our own hands and we pretty much have to stop with the self-inflicted wounds and things like that. So uh, with that being said, I think the guys are, you know, we're still – Confident, and I, I believe that everybody still believes in the guys that we line up with, and we don't doubt each other. So we feel when we step out on the field, we have a, a good chance of winning every game we play in. 
Very good, very good. All right, well, we have another question from the audience. This has become a show regular here. Bernard, you, you've got the same guys coming every <laughs> week for you, your big draw. All right, go ahead and, and ask your question. Hi, uh, you've had three of the first four games on the road. I was just wondering if there are any advantages to play in a schedule that's heavily front-loaded with road games. I wouldn't say, you know, I'm not a believer in that. You know, like, I go back to, you know, we get paid to play football. You know, we grew up playing this game for free. Um, you know, this is, we are the best in the world at what we do. I mean, that's just, I mean, that's, I can't, you know, find any other way to put it. We are the best in the world at what we do, whether it's at home or whether it's on a road. We're still playing football. You have 11 guys on offense with pigskin, and you got 11 guys on defense trying to get that. And 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 nothing changes. It, the environment and everything. We shut the fans out. The fans can't get on the field. So you know, you have 60 plus thousand people screaming for you know names or your name or whatever it else. You know, I'm I don't care about what's on the road. I don't care about what's at home. We're playing football on the field. We we are blessed with this opportunity. Go and play and play hard. You know, and 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 it's just it's for me. You know, I've been there. I've been around. I've seen it. I've I've won it. You know, and I want to win it again. And so I I don't I don't I'm, I take this serious. And so uh, I'm just I kind of I don't know if I gave you a good answer, <laughs> but. Uh, I'm kind of getting a little energized a little bit, so sorry. <laughs> we love seeing that energy. That's good. That's good. Um, okay, we, we've got another one uh, here from Twitter. And so, Cam, we, we talked a little bit about the dogs, and we talked about your cooking. We didn't get to talk yet about Ninja Warrior. So this question was from at LV Rutledge, Lindsay Rutledge, and she wanted to know, uh, look at that face. She wanted to know, okay, Bernard, uh -huh. Could you beat Cam if you were trying to no qualify way. for Ninja Warrior? And I, do you know what Ninja Warrior is? Maybe Cam should give us a little bit of a background first. Enlighten me. I have to show you a YouTube clip when we leave here. But the answer <laughs> to that question is no way would I let Bernard beat me at American Ninja Warrior. No way. I'm trying to – oh, whoa, no. That's the, uh, that's the obstacle course thing. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now you're following you. Okay, I'm thinking of – you know, because Cam usually – we have videos of him showing his V. Wow. And his, oh his chest out goodness. and everything else. Oh. So, you know, I don't, you know, he's a fitness model, oh you know, so goodness. this is, you know, this is all surprising wow. to me. So, you know, this is, I'm, I wouldn't put nothing past him. So, but I would beat him though. I really would. Oh, of course you would. Of course. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So, Cam, tell, tell us, I mean, what, what were the hardest opti obstacles on Ninja Warrior? Tell us a little bit about that experience. I think it's uh, climbing the ropes at the end. It's like a three story, two story, three story building. And there's like, you're not, attached to any harnesses or anything like that. So you're pulling, you know, 250 plus pounds up, you know, two, three stories. And you got the little guys, they're like <laughs> 165, they're like flying through it. So I'll probably say that was the toughest part, the climbing the ropes at the end. Yeah, I, I can't even imagine. I can't even begin to imagine doing that. All right, we've got another one here from the audience. Go ahead and ask your question. Okay, uh, Charlie Whitehurst has been in the league for like nine years and he's only started a handful of games. Do you think we'll ever see Zach Renberger while Jake Locker's hurt? Um, yes, Coach Pollard. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so I guess this is the GM and me coming out. Um, I think, you know, we've seen him come, up, come in and play a little bit. You know, obviously we're down 41-17 or whatever it was. Um, I think by him getting the experience that he's getting, hopefully we don't ever see this kind of score again. But, you know, with him getting, if we ever up, you know, you want to see him kind of get some, some, some time, full speed against a, a, a defense that are, that's trying to get him. But I think, you know, for the most part, you know, if you put him in, I think you tell either the team or you tell the fans or the city that, you know, we're here to rebuild. And, and you know, and that's just me, you know, and, and I could be wrong. But I think, you know, if you see Mettenberger, who I believe is going to be a spectacular quarterback in this, in this league, but – he is a guy who he's going to have to learn and understand. He's a gunslinger right now. He can put that ball everywhere on the football field. Um, but I think putting it everywhere on the football field means going into other people's hands as well. And so I think, you know, uh, as of right now, you want to see him, if we're up big, you want to see him come in and get some, you know, get some quality time uh, with some, you know, some good people on our, as far as the receiving core and the running backs just to see live action. But I think next year and the year after is going to be a great time for him. Am I wrong? No, I think you're right. But, but Zach has talked about this, guys. During preseason, 
you kind of you guys kind of got after him a little yes. bit, tried to break in the rookie. Can how do you how do you maybe get the point across to a rookie quarterback? You're not in college anymore and getting ready for the NFL. Well, we leave that to Bernard. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> before every practice, you know, if if Bernard can't get in your head, I think you'll make it into the league. You know, you'll be a pretty good quarterback. But I think. With Mettenberger, he's shown like a lot of you know flashes of, of you know greatness, a lot of you know good stuff. Uh, especially seeing him in the preseason, mm -hmm. uh, I think he's a talented guy. I think uh, fans will probably be interested in seeing him um, if things don't improve. You know, but I hope it doesn't get to that point. Exactly. You know, I I think that um, you know he has a bright future. I think uh, if people get to see what we see, they'll they'll love him. But uh, this is me. Hopefully, we don't we don't have to see that. We don't have to resort to, you know, bringing him out and uh, putting him in the game. You know, uh, I think we're confident in whoever goes in at quarterback. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So with any of the options that we have, I feel like we should be able to win a game. Good deal. And it cost it cost him thirty dollars every interception in the preseason and in practice. So he paid me a lot of money. <laughs> All right. Well, I know everybody here is looking forward to seeing what lies ahead at Cleveland. Thank you guys so much, Cam. Thanks for being here. Bernard, of course. David Clymer, John Glennon, thanks for being up there. And Jim Wyatt. And uh, we will be back next week here at Moe's. Thank you very much.